Hello, and thank you for joining me today for an introduction to Dedo's Business Management Solution, Autotask PSA, a fully integrated solution to help organize, automate, and optimize your entire business from a single cloud-based platform. I just wanna share a few quick slides about the company and our solution before we jump into a live product demonstration. Dedo offers a variety of product lines to meet all your business needs. All of these products can operate independent of each other, but bundled together provide a truly unified world-class solution. The focus of today's demonstration will be on Autotask PSA, again, a full business man management solution, but we'll also be touching on Dado RMM for your remote monitoring and management. Uh, Dado RMM is an agent-based remote monitoring and management solution to handle patch management, scripting, alert monitoring, and remote control of your customer's network and workstations. Dado also offers a variety of backup disaster recovery options to easily restore a lost file or an entire business infrastructure in minutes. Again, we'll be focusing our presentation today on Autotask PSA. As a combined company, Dado offers a local footprint and presence with over 13,000 customers being served, over 90,000 users in 125 countries, 50 million tickets being produced annually, and over $6 billion being invoiced out of the PSA solution. We've got over 1,400 plus employees, and we've got office locations around the globe, so we are local and near you uh, when we need to be. Again, Autotask PSA is a cloud-based, 100% SaaS solution, purpose-built for IT service providers, managed service providers, to unify your entire business from sales through ordering, service delivery, straight through to invoicing from a single integrated platform. Autotask provides a simple, scalable solution tailored for every role from technician straight up through executive manager that can be accessed from any device any location, any browser. Autotask PSA eliminates the pain of running disparate applications that aren't communicating with each other, causing duplication of efforts, double entry into multiple systems, inefficiencies, and overall lost billable time. We do also offer an open API. We've got hundreds and hundreds of existing integrations with third-party tools, but we offer an open API, an open eco structure, and of course, integrations can be written with our solution through the API. Born from birth for 17 years now, experiencing delivery from the cloud. Uh, this solution from ground up was created and developed as a solution specific for IT service providers and managed service providers and from the cloud since day one. We own all of our own infrastructure. Uh, there is no need for you to download or purchase any materials, no designated servers required in any way. No fat clients to download and it is multi-browser support. So Chrome, Safari, Firefox, even Internet Explorer, uh, which you'll be making fun of me for using in just a moment. We contractually obligate 99.9% .9 or guarantee 99.9% .9 uptime in our contracts. We've been averaging and running over four nines for the last eight years that I've been employed here, um, which actually equates to less than 60 minutes of downtime for an entire year, both planned and unplanned. This is a mission critical application. It's gotta be up and running when you need it and we have teams and measures in place to make sure it is always up and running and available for you. Again, combined with Data RMM and even BCDR, we offer the only true unified platform for one company, one IP, single sign-on, single point of access, single invoice, right, and single vendor of support. We, of course, have best-in-class support as well with over access to 90,000 of our uh, end users in our community, a feature request forum, visibility and transparency to our product roadmaps and our release schedules. We've got a YouTube channel with training videos on YouTube that you can watch at your own time, pace, stop, fast forward, rewind. Online help consists of uh, full PDF user manuals, tips and tricks, best practices right available in the solution itself instructor-led live training webinars that we offer on a recurring schedule, all just part of your partnership with Autotask, no additional charges here. 
We of course have professional services, implementation and consulting, a separate client support department, which offers 24 five support, client portal access, email us, call us in. Um, it's not outsourced in any way. We, we of course uh, have our own product support team right here in our Albany, New York headquarters office. Uh, any licensed employee can call and we offer guaranteed service level agreements for priority response time as well. All right, so enough with the presentation. I'm gonna go ahead and end that PowerPoint and we'll drive right in and jump right into a live product demonstration in the PSA product itself. This entire solution is extremely configurable and it's extremely uh, scalable per individual user. So the entire solution is permissions-based per individual user. It will dynamic, dynamically display the appropriate information for that user based on their role and their security permissions. That of course provides a scaled and simplified solution tailor-made for me specifically based on my role. It also provides the ability for you to lock down sensitive data, right? Or information that you just don't want everybody in your organization to have visibility and access to. Having said that, for today's demonstration, I am logged in as a system administrator. I have full rights and privileges to everything. And I've also created a whole bunch of different dashboards so I can simply demonstrate to people in different roles without having to log out and log back in as somebody else with different permissions. But in a real environment, I'm only going to see the information, right, applicable to me. Everything else will be completely hidden from my views, including my menu options. So again, Autotask does sell per package. We do not sell per module or a la carte. We offer three different packages, an essentials, a premium, and an ultimate. Everything that I'm gonna be demonstrating today is all gonna fall within our premium package at no additional charges. But all of our products or all of our packages, excuse me, will all consist of a CRM module for not only account management and asset management, but also the ability to track and manage your sales opportunities, forecasting of revenue, you know, pending close dates, top and bottom performers, why are we winning, why are we losing sales opportunities, quoting, even sending out maybe blast notifications to multiple end users all at once for marketing campaigns, newsletters, promotions, even service announcements. They're also gonna come with a full contracts module which automates your billing for you based on your contractual agreements with your clients. So whether your client is being billed hourly at contracted labor rates, or they pay you a fixed recurring fee every month, or maybe they prepaid for a block of support hours that we're deducting from. Maybe if it's even a project that you're gonna bill a fixed price in milestones. 50% up front, 50% when the job's complete, or as I reach different phases within my project, right, progressive billing, I might bill for the next milestone. Um, those are all examples of contracts and autotask. And again, it is an automated billing arrangement, it's not the creation of a legal document, it's more the translation of that signed legal document. All of our packages include a full project management solution, which is really for longer term projects that might have a series of phases and tasks and subtasks that might be assigned to people in different departments you know, and have different due dates. Uh, network install, server migrations, Office 365 migrations, for example, uh, would all be good examples of maybe using a project in Autotask as opposed to a service desk ticketing solution, which is more for your support, your help desk, right? It's more of a one-off task as opposed to a series or a multitask list. You know, typically a uh, customer reports an issue, we raise a ticket, we resolve the issue, we close the ticket out. All three of our packages also include timesheets to handle time tracking. Not only billable time against tickets or projects that you're working on, but also maybe regular time for you know, internal meetings, for example, um, and also even time off. Optionally, if you wanna use Autotask to manage vacation time, personal time, sick time, your resources could actually put a time off request through the solution that could go through a built-in approval process similar to timesheets, similar to expense reports. Again, all optional. All of these features are there if you need them or can grow into them you know, as you grow, as uh, the landscape starts to change. We don't want you outgrowing the solution and having to look for a new one. So maybe you don't need to manage your time off today. Down the road, maybe you do. You already have a solution that offers that capability. 
All right, now here's where it starts to vary as far as you know what's included in our, in our different packages. So everything I've mentioned so far is included in all of our packages. Procurement is something that's included in the premium and ultimate packages only, not included in essentials. Inventory is though, uh, and that allows you to track any materials that you might keep in stock, where they're located, how many you have available, when you need to reorder. Procurement allows for the ordering of those materials, right? Creating purchase orders, fulfilling, receiving, delivering them out. All three of our packages come with over 200 stick built system reports that we provide to you out of box that you can run on demand. They are great reports. P&L reporting, utilization reporting, service desk ticket metrics, you know, sales quotas and things along those lines all come out of box and again are included in all three of our packages. In our premium package, we also include a report designer that gives you the ability to write your own custom reports, automatically schedule them to run on a recurring schedule, and automatic delivery as an email attachment. We also offer an abundance of trend analysis reports so you can see how things are trending over time. And then we'll be taking a deeper dive into these dashboards, which also provide real-time reporting metrics at my fingertips. The outsource feature available in premium and ultimate packages only provide unlimited contractor use without having to pay for a contractor license to the Autotask platform. You know, we actually offer an outsource module that gives you the ability to outsource service desk tickets to external contractors or subcontractors through a separate subcontractor portal. So the contractor can log into a separate portal, only have visibility to the jobs that you've outsourced to them, be able to track their time and add their notes and update the status and add their material charges. All of that is being reflected in your database, but again, it gives them a separate portal, unlimited contractor usage without you having to pay uh, a user fee for those contractors. And finally, admin provides full configuration and customization. So we will pre-configure this solution for you out of box. We're not gonna deliver a blank slate and have you start reinventing the wheel and building everything from ground up. We are gonna deliver a working product with default dashboards, default drop-down menu options, default reports, default notification templates, even some default workflow rules that are ready to activate when you are. But again, all of those defaults can be modified and edited to, again, tailor this, this solution specific to your business model, but you're not gonna have to start out with a blank slate and start reinventing the wheel and building everything from ground up. That is everything that's rolled up into our PSA package. Sold separately is Datto RMM, which again is an agent-based solution. Agent gets installed on your customer's device. We can, can do alert monitoring, provide remote control access, scripting, and patch management. Remember that we do offer an open API. We integrate with other RMM solutions like your solar winds, your Kaseyas, your continuums, but we could also potentially replace those uh, RMM solutions with data RMM. So I'm gonna touch on it a little bit today so you can see the single sign-on, right? The single point of entry and that true unification between data RMM and PSA. Keep in mind, the RMM is sold separately and we can also integrate with other RMM solutions. Both can be purchased independently, run independently, but again, combined together, uh, offer a really truly unified platform. All right, let's log in, right? And again, depending on who I am, I'm gonna be presented with these configurable dashboards that give me immediate insight, immediate visibility to the information that matters most at my fingertips with drill down capability and even action items, right? If I can take, uh, in some cases, take immediate action right from the dashboard. As an example, from an owner's perspective, I want that single pane of glass view that's giving me insight into my entire company, right? I want to know about contracts that are coming up for renewal, warranties that might be expiring, both might turn into a new sales renewal opportunity for me. You know, maybe I want to see resource utilization. How many hours are my resources logging? How many of those are billable? Drill in for the detail. Are we meeting our service level agreements, right? Are we getting that first response out on time? How long is it taking us to close out and resolve these tickets? What's going on in ticketing, right? As opposed to projects, what's going on in sales? How about purchasing revenue or finance? How are our customers responding to our services based on surveys we're sending out? 
So again, you know, single pane of glass into ticketing, sales, procurement, finance, customer satisfaction, all configurable, all drill down capability. And again, this is just an example of a default dashboard that might come out of box. Just kind of moving along the dashboards uh, to show a couple of different examples from a sales perspective, right? If I'm a sales manager, when I log in, this is gonna be more of a CRM and sales solution. My dashboard will reflect what's in our pipeline. You know, what phase of the sales cycle are these deals in, pending or forecasting of revenue? You know, I might wanna see things by different territory or sales region or by probability of closing the deal. You know, why are we winning and why are we losing these opportunities? What's supposed to be closing this month? What are we, what did we, you know, what did we miss? Uh, maybe our top and, and bottom sales performers, for example. Drill down capability again. Just moving along and, and kind of demonstrating to different roles, right? A service manager, when they log in, they want to see all things tickets. How many open tickets do we have? How many are unassigned? How many are critical? What's coming due or going overdue? You know, immediate visibility into our monitoring alerts. Uh, open tickets by different queues or groupings, of course, all of which are configurable by you. So how many level one versus level two tickets do I have, for example, right? Maybe I wanna see open tickets by priority. Let's tackle those critical issues first or by issue or sub-issue type. Let's tackle the server related issues first. Maybe by status, maybe by customer, just a couple of ways to show you how you might wanna slice and dice your data. Um, load balances, right? So I can quickly and easily see if there's an out of balance condition of assignments among my technicians. Aging backlog, how long have these tickets been open for? What needs our attention? Again, drill in for detail. So whether that's projects and I want to know how many times we were over or under our estimated hours or where we are percent complete wise or remaining hours needed to complete these projects or just a listing of all the active projects that we're working on, you know, straight through to billing and finance. Again, depending on my role, these dashboards will display any of that pertinent information to, again, the information that matters most. Let's go through a ticketing workflow, right? So we'll go through a ticket to billing workflow, get a pretty good idea of the solution and how you might use it. And I'm going to go ahead and start over here on the My Work tab. So far, I've been showing you manager type tabs, which give me a global view across the board. But for each individual technician or, or resource, I want a dashboard that's really just displaying what I'm responsible to work on, right? What are my assigned tickets or my assigned project tasks, right? Or my to-dos, right? Or my time, or the cues that I should be personally monitoring. So it's a scaled down dashboard of just my assignments, my time, my stuff, as opposed to that global view of everything across the board. And you'll notice I can have inner, uh, actually itemized lists right in these widgets. It saves me that one click into, you know, drill in for the detail. And I can actually have an itemized list right in my widget with interactive menus where we can just start working right from these particular views. As far as ticket creation goes, we have an incoming email parser. So tickets can be created automatically from an incoming email. We can automatically produce auto response notifications when those emails come in and we create the ticket from it. Advanced features of our email parser include reply handling. So as replies are being, you know, going back and forth maybe between the technician and the end user, uh, all of that email communication is just automatically being logged to the existing ticket as a note. I'm just going to go ahead and pop open a ticket that I have here that actually was created from an incoming email, uh, just so we have something to look at here. You'll notice that when an email comes in, whatever the subject line of the email is becomes my ticket title. Whatever the body of the email is becomes my ticket description. And then as we might be communicating back and forth through email strings, those communi communications are automatically being appended to the existing ticket as a note. In addition, resources can actually email into this mailbox. And by using hashtags on the first line of an email, they can actually capture a time entry. They can update the status of the jobs they're working on, and they can add notes to those jobs all through an email exchange without ever logging into Autotask the full product or a mobile app. So this gives me some offline processing. Maybe I'm even in an area that's got spotty internet, right? I could still send the email through 
hashtag t equals however much time I want to capture. That would be one hour of time. My status would be updated. My notes are added. I don't have to wait until I get back to the office and remember to do that or wait until service is restored. As soon as the email is processed, it's, it's you know, processes if it happened in real time. And again, time tracked, status updated, notes are added. I've mentioned the mobile app, so of course we can do things through the mobile app as well. And through the full product. In addition to email, we also offer a client access portal. Again, unlimited client access in our premium and ultimate packages. This is permissions based per individual end user as well. So a basic user can create a new ticket and only see the tickets that they specifically have created. We can also extend permissions so a user for that same site has visibility to all the tickets for their site location regardless of who created it. Obviously, they can check status and progress, um, you know, keep in collaboration with you in the form of notes and attachments. So I can drill into any one of these tickets and I can see any notes that the IT service provider, managed service provider wants me to see. You know, as the MSP or ITSP, I can keep those notes internal only and not visible to my customers. But here I can share notes with my customers. They can add their own notes. They can add their own attachments. There's a knowledge base share, so we can actually share knowledge base articles with our customers through the self-help portal. You know, maybe they can get a resolution, resolve their issue on their own, or reset their own password without having to go and submit that ticket to you. You actually have the ability to create different request types. So when your end user goes to create a ticket, they're gonna select the appropriate request type. That request type can be configured dynamically to ensure that you're capturing the right information from the customer based on the selection of the request type. Any messages that you wanna provide to your end user based on the selection of the request type. Um, and again, really just allowing you to control the processing of that ticket. What queue should it come into? What status should we set it to? Again based on the selection of the request type. So when they select that request type, that will drive the configuration of the form. Again, it allows you to have dynamic background questions that you're trying to capture from that end user, dynamic to the service request that they selected. You can make those fields required or optional entry, and you have up to 20 uh, background questions that you can add. You can have nice little personalized messages, right, that are returned to your end user, again, dynamic to that request type, maybe in the case of an outage, and you want them to, you know, to know that you're aware of the outage and services expected to be restored in, you know, X amount of time. We can also do some priority mapping. So rather than having your end user just say that everything is a critical issue, right, we can just present them with a couple of quick questions, and from the replies to those questions, we can actually map to a priority, right? So this might let map to a low priority, for example. Save and close, and that's how they could create a new ticket from the client access portal. We can also share project work with them, right? Very similar to tickets. I can give them visibility to the projects that we're working on. They can see the status and the progress of those projects, share notes and attachments back and forth, but we can even assign a project task to a customer to complete. And they would have the ability to mark the task complete, you know, maybe add an attachment like a signed legal document or something along those or a sign off, you know, maybe even add a note, uh, I'm approving, you know, completion of the job, something along those lines. Based on permissions, you can give your end users the ability to run their own reports. They can manage their own users and their own assets if you want. You know, so if they hire a new employee, they can add them as a new user to this portal. They don't have to ask you to do it. Uh, same with any new assets or de devices that they might be adding. There's a knowledge base share I mentioned earlier. So you can maintain knowledge base articles internally for yourselves, but you can also share those knowledge base articles with your customers through this client portal. It could be options to share the knowledge base article with everybody or only one named site location or maybe groups of customers based on classifications or territories. And then, of course, you can also put your own custom links to some other URLs, maybe a payment processing you know, site or uh, your corporate website. 
you can brand and mask the URL. So obviously you can make it a user-friendly URL with your own company name. You can brand the uh, portal with logos per client. So maybe you're even using your customer's logo when they log in um, and the color codes can be uh, customized as well. In addition to email and client access portal, of course, monitoring alerts will also create tickets and Autotask PSA. And again, that's not just with Data RMM, but any RMM solution that we're integrating with, those monitoring alerts will create a ticket automatically in Autotask PSA. And then of course, if we were gonna create a ticket manually, this is my primary toolbar right up here at the top, go to the plus sign and just select whatever it is that I wanna create. In the case of a new ticket, what I do want to mention is that this ticket form is fully configurable. So you actually have the ability to create your own ticket categories, very much like I was showing you in the client portal request types. This allows you to configure your form based on the category. So it helps drive processing with, again, what critical information needs to be captured, what would be nice to have, what's not relevant at all, so don't display it on the form at all you know, dynamic checklist specific to onboarding uh, a new employee, and even configurable insights that give us information at our fingertips to the critical detail that we need to troubleshoot, close out, and resolve these issues. So when I select onboarding, for example, that's gonna control the display, right? The fields that are displayed and required and optional, custom fields I want added to the form, and you'll see now a default checklist has also been displayed uh, specific for onboarding a new employee in this example. As I start to populate some of the information on this form, configurable insights can start to display over here on the far right panel with, again, that critical information that we need at our fingertips without having to go leave this page and go search for it somewhere else to find out you know, details about the customer. Maybe I need some passwords or IPs or domains, right, or site level information. Can get it right here from the ticket. I immediately know there's two other open tickets for this site location. One came in in the last 30 days. You know, single click maybe to make sure at least I'm not creating a duplicate ticket as an example. Um, entering some more information, right? Maybe when I enter the end user, what else do we need to know about the end user? Same thing, are there other open tickets for that end user that I might wanna know about? As I'm scrolling down the form a little bit more, I can actually browse out and see all the assets for this site location and maybe check to see if they're still under warranty or the next icon over actually allows me to just search for the assets that are specifically owned by the end user that I named on the ticket. So it's either let me see all the assets for the site or just those that belong to this particular end user. I can actually link that device or asset to the ticket. It's a serialized desktop in this example and we are keeping a ticket history on that asset level. And then again, over here, what else do I wanna know? I can easily see when it was installed and if it's under warranty, if it's under SLA, if, if it's on a contract, right? Um, how many open tickets do we have for this serialized workstation? And better yet, how many times has this same issue happened on this same device in the history, you know, and the life cycle of the device? So with having that history, we're gonna see, you know, are we sending a technician out to the same site to work on the same device and the same problem over and over and over again? It might be time you know, to uh, start taking a different approach, maybe retire that device or replace that device. All right, let's kind of go through a workflow. So regardless of how the ticket comes in, whether it's from an email or the client portal or a monitoring alert, you know, or I created it manually, I'm gonna work on tickets pretty much the same way. I can initiate my workflow from the dashboard. So as I mentioned, maybe I have an itemized detailed list and write in my detailed list or widget, I've got interactive menus where with Datto RMM, I can open up the alert, open up that device, take a screenshot or take remote control over my customer's device with a single click, single sign on right from my dashboard view. I might also drill into one of these widgets or dashboards and get an itemized detailed list instead, you know, with interactive menus that we can start working again right from these particular views. However, if I pop open one of these tickets in more detail, you know, immediately a timer starts to tick for me. It's an automatic punch in and it's a, a nice little feature that's just gonna help make uh, tracking and managing my time a little bit easier on me. So it's like an automatic punch in. As soon as I open up this ticket, that timer starts to tick and it's helping me track and allocate my time. 
all right? You'll notice the ability to pause the timer. So maybe I'm working on this ticket. I need to pause that timer. I'm going to come back to it, but, you know, the phone is ringing or some other fire just happened that I have to go address. You know, I have to go deal with some other issue, but I'm going to come back and continue working on this. So with a single click of a mouse, we can pause the timer. You know, we can resume the timer, pick up from where we left off. We can record the time, which will then log the time to my timesheet, as well as automatically turn that time into an invoice item for billing approval. Now, because this was a monitoring alert, right, I have the ability to open up that alert and take remote control over my customer's device with a single click, single sign-on. This is part of Datto RMM that I'm showing you right now. So this toolbar is part of Datto RMM and only Datto RMM. You will not have this toolbar integrating with another RMM solution. And this gives me single point of access, single click of a mouse, single sign-on to take remote control through Splashtop, through VNC, RDP, just taking a screenshot or maybe opening up the device itself, or my favorite is just kind of going in in stealth mode through the agent browser, and that opened up on my other monitor, but I'm already in, get to see how fast that was, but single click, single sign on, I didn't have to log into another remote control application, a log me in, a team viewer, I didn't have to you know, enter another username and password into another disparate application. Now this is part of Datto RMM, so I'm not gonna get into this in too much detail with you, but obviously I can shut things down or restart the device or wake things up or go to a command line, run a script, chat with the end user, you know, take up some remote control option through those other options that I showed you earlier, Splashtop, VNC, RDP. Everything I am doing is happening in real time on this customer's device and we are keeping an event log. So when I terminate this remote control session, and I apologize, things are opening up on my other monitor there, um, I'm immediately presented with all of the activity that took place in the remote control session, including chats with the end user. And with a single click of a mouse, I can now have all of that remote control activity automatically logged to the ticket for me. It's one less thing I have to do manually. And again, even if we're shaving off seconds, right, per remote control session, per technician per day, those seconds are going to quickly add up and you're going to see an immediate return on your investment. And if it's an existing ticket, right, I can just add these, uh, all of that acti those notes to the existing ticket automatically as a note. One more click of a mouse, I'm back on the ticket and my timer is running for me and it's been kind of tracking and allocating the time that I've been spending, you know, in this remote control session. Hit that record button and now I'm going to log that time. Again, I'm going to log this time to my timesheet. It's also gonna automatically turn this time into an invoice item to bill my client. So that time came in from my timer. Notice we can set our billing rounding increments to round up to the next X number of minutes. It's still being updated, right? I'm still technically working on this ticket, so the timer is still ticking away as I'm doing this. Um, I can override that timer though. So maybe I forgot to hit pause, I forgot to hit resume, whatever the case might be, I can override that timer and come in and plug my own time in. I could put a starting time and an ending time in. It will calculate my time worked. We can use form templates for some common tasks, right? Maybe a password reset, for example, single click of a mouse, and that could pre-populate multiple values automatically with defaults, so I don't have to enter them in manually. Remember, I can do this from the mobile app, and I can also do this through email parsing, right? Remember with those hashtags that I mentioned earlier in the call. Now, let's say, for example, I want to keep working on that ticket, uh, but I need to get it out of my way and I need to go address another, another issue. There is the easy option to send a ticket over to my own personal work list. And when I do, it keeps my timer ticking for me. So I'm not losing my ticket. I'm not losing my time. It allows me to add this job to all the other jobs that I might be actively or in progress of working on or that I just need a quick and easy way back to. So I can pop open this work list from anywhere I am in the solution to get to those jobs with a single click of a mouse. I don't have to go back to dashboards and click and search and navigate to find them. Again, each one of these jobs has their own independent timer. You'll notice I can pause the timer from here. You know, maybe I'm going to go back over to this ticket that's been paused and either just popping the ticket open 
will start my timer back up automatically from where I left off. Even if I close that window, I didn't lose my ticket, I didn't lose my timer, it's still there. But again, single click to pause, single click to maybe resume, and single click to hit the record button. So this is where I'm gonna indicate what it was that I was doing. All of these work types are fully configurable and they define exactly how you're gonna bill for your work. Is it billable or non-billable? Is there a minimum amount of time I should be charging or a maximum? You know, should I be adjusting the labor rate or charging time and a half or double time or a flat rate, right, or a custom rate? Now, even though remote support is billable, if it's covered under a customer's contract, no charge to that client, but it's still revenue and we still want that time applied to the contract for P&L reporting, right? Make sure we're profitable. But the system knows how we're gonna charge the client. The technician does not have to know if the customer's on a contract, go searching to see what kind of contracts they're on, determine what work is covered or not covered, and figure out if they need to use a billable or non-billable code. We're gonna do all of that for you. So all I'm gonna do is say, you know what, it was remote, whatever the status of the job is, however much time I wanna track, and again, I'm gonna override that timer, and then any more detailed notes that I wanna add. These notes are visible to your customer. They'll see them in the portal, probably on the invoice that you're gonna send out, and in customer-facing reports. Internal notes, never visible to customer. And again, we can use templates to make, you know, uh, reduce the data entry, reduce room for data entry error. I'm gonna record two time entries real quick to really show you the automation of billing. Now again, as the technician, I might not know what's covered or what's not covered under the terms of their agreement. All I know is what I did. And let's say this turned into a couple of hours of after hours work. I'm gonna indicate how much time I spent, right? And any detailed notes that I wanna add. Now at this point, the system is actually recognizing the fact that after hours is not covered under this selected contract but it continues to look for another contract for the same client that does cover this work. This gives your technician an advisory message to just double check the work type they selected. It gives them the ability to make a correction, right, if necessary. If it is correct, all they're gonna do is click okay, and we just adjusted the contract automatically on that ticket to automate the billing to the customer. Now again, everything we're doing is being logged on this ticket. So we've got visual SLA and due date timelines. We've got checklists to see what still needs to be done or what's been completed. And every time even a workflow rule fires, right, or a system does something it, uh, itself, everything, including the technician's notes, the customer's notes, will all be logged to this ticket. So we'll always have a permanent audit trail. Again, if we have to reopen the ticket down the road or it gets changed, you know, reassigned to somebody else, we'll have that full audit trail of activity. I'm gonna take this right into the billing piece. So just by recording that time, we automatically convert that time now into an invoice item that's waiting billing approval. So this is where I can look over any new time entries or material charges or billable expenses, product subscriptions like an annual domain registration, recurring services like your BCDR, right, your backups, uh, virus protection, desktop monitoring, server monitoring, whatever the case might be, hosting, and even your milestone billing, right, for that project fixed fee uh, work that we might be doing as well. So here, any new time entries that have not yet been approved will be displayed. I could apply filters at the top if I just wanna look for a certain customer or a certain project, right, or a certain status. Otherwise, it's returning everything. Uh, all technicians, all customers, all tickets, all projects. And here I can see the customer, right? The date that the transaction was performed. There's the ticket, which I can get a little bit of a, you know, detail if just by hovering over it. I can see more of the ticket description. Here's those summary notes that the technician entered, right? These are gonna be visible to my customer. It's gonna go on an invoice. I might wanna be just checking for good, accurate, complete, appropriate notes, you know, spelling, grammar, all that good stuff. Nice, complete note. Maybe it should be in an internal note field instead, but this is where I'm gonna catch those mistakes and make any corrections that I might need to make before I go sending the invoice out the door and my customer finds our mistakes. Notice the work that was being performed, the status of the ticket. I can still bill for this work as soon as it's been recorded. I don't have to wait until the status is marked complete. 
But again, if you want to, you can say, don't give me anything unless the status is complete. I might be looking over estimated to actual hours. Wow, 45 hours on one ticket. Is that a typo? Is that something that I want to look into? Should it have really taken that much time to work on this one particular issue? Notice how much time the resource entered. That's the technician that recorded the time and the automation of billing. So even though remote support is billable, these two people happen to be on a managed service type of a contract that covers the remote support at no charge, no charge to that client. They're gonna see it as a $0 charge covered under contract on their invoice. Here is maybe somebody that was out of scope or, or a break fix or time and materials, right? The system knew after hours was not covered under the managed service agreement, but I do have a contracted labor rate specific for that client and we're grabbing the after hours labor rate for that particular client. So we're automating your billing for you. Again, whether it's covered under contract, whether you're billing hourly, whether we're deducting it from a prepaid block of support hours, we're handling that for you here automatically. Now you can make adjustments if you want, right? Or, or this is where I'm gonna make any corrections to the time entry or the transactions that my technicians entered. And once I approve these items, uh, an invoice has now been created automatically, but it's just queued up waiting for you to process whenever you're ready to do so. So I might be accumulating the charges for the whole month, right? And then sending out an invoice at the end of the month. So as I'm approving new labor charges or materials or, or services or expenses, our default is to roll them all into a single invoice for that billing period so I can send one invoice out the door you know, for all the labor and the materials and the recurring services. Now, of course, it's easy to split things up and invoice at different times or you know, split things out on different invoices, but our default is let's try to send one invoice out the door for everything. Now, when it's time to invoice, I can grab everything in a single batch, right? And I can process all my invoices in a single batch. And if I was integrating with QuickBooks on-prem, this is where the transfer to QuickBooks would happen in real time with a single click of a mouse. So when I hit that process button, I can be printing and emailing my invoices right out of Autotask and transferring them to QuickBooks at the same exact time. This is where the life cycle in Autotask ends, all right? So once we invoice something, that's where the life cycle ends. We are now going to transfer that to your accounting solution you know, you're still gonna be using whatever solution you're using today to handle your payment processing, manage your accounts receivable, your accounts payable, you know, your bookkeeping. Um, the invoice is fully configurable. So obviously you can brand it with your logo, really pick and choose how much detail you wanna display. You could have multiple invoice configurations set up for multiple customers if you want. And again, even showing those $0 charges being covered under contract is an option. We don't have to show the $0 charges at all on the invoice if you would prefer doing it that way. Now, when I process my invoices with QuickBooks Online, I'm actually not going to select the option to transfer to QuickBooks. I'm simply going to process my invoices in Autotask. And QuickBooks Online uses a middleware program through App Connect that simply runs on a 15 minute scheduled timer or sync. It comes into Autotask and it looks for any new invoice that you've processed that does not have an invoice number in it. If it does not have an invoice number, it automatically pulls that invoice into QuickBooks Online and returns an invoice number back to Autotask. And when that invoice has been paid in full, both QuickBooks On-Prem or QuickBooks Online can return a date paid back to Autotask. It's informational only. Again, we're not tracking accounts receivable, right? Um, it would just be an informational date to let you know if the invoice has been paid or not. Now, I'm mentioning QuickBooks because those are the two most common accounting applications most of our customers are using, but of course, we have several other uh, integrations with other accounting solutions as well. I'm gonna wrap this up with our workflow rule engine. I know this was a lot of information to show you, but how can we make this even better? How can we automate your processes, automatically generate notifications and alert you when necessary, make sure nothing's slipping through the cracks, the ball's not getting dropped anywhere, you're not missing SLAs, you're not missing due dates, you don't have stale tickets sitting out there nobody's working on, you know, you're not missing projected close dates for your sales opportunities or renewals for your customer's asset warranties or contracts. 
So this does span across the board, right? CRM, we can workflow rule against uh, sales opportunities, sales orders, and assets. Again, when the customer's warranty is expiring in an X amount of time, what do I want to happen? Maybe I want to notify the customer. I want to put it to do on my sales reps calendars to initiate the renewal sales opportunity, as an example. You know, same with billing contracts. Very same type of a workflow. When the contract is expiring in X amount of time, right? then what do we want to do? Maybe we want to notify the customer that their contract is coming up for renewal. We want to put it to do on the sales reps calendars to create a sales opportunity, right? Notify the following people, take the following actions. Same with projects, both on a project level or an individual task level. You know, here's an example, maybe when a predecessor task gets marked complete, notify the resource of the successor task and update the status of that successor task to, uh, you know, ready to start work or in progress or something along those lines. And I'll spend more time on the service desk piece. The UI is the same, right, regardless of what we're talking about. The difference is the entity. So whether we're talking about a project or a ticket. So obviously when tickets are being created for the first time, our workflow rules might at, uh, route these tickets into the appropriate queues, right? Or um, send notifications out to the appropriate people and, and just let everybody know, you know, that uh, a new ticket was created, for example. Maybe as people are editing those tickets, right, or working on the ticket or adding a note or time, we want the system to do something automatically for us. Better yet, if nobody's working on an open ticket at all within any given time frame, right? Minutes, hours, days, what do we want the system to do? possibly escalate that ticket to an escalation queue, update the status to escalated or immediate action required, notify the assigned resource, right? Send them an email, send them a text message, send them both, put it to do on their calendar, put that ticket on their work list. Those are examples. Similar to that, right? Hey, let, let me know if I've got a ticket that's been in the same status for too long. Let's take, hey, ticket's been in waiting customer approval status, if it's been in that same status for more than you know, three days, for example, then auto close the ticket out or send a follow-up notification right before we auto complete the ticket. Alert us before we miss due dates or before we miss SLAs. So we get alerted in time to take the appropriate actions, right? meet those deadlines, meet those obligations. It's a very simple intuitive interface. Hey, just with a tick box selection, when somebody makes an edit or adds a note or records time, what do I want the system to do? Well, maybe we want to apply conditions and we only want the rule to fire when the following conditions exist. We can add up to five additional conditions, easy drop down, op, uh, drop down menu selections here where now I can be looking for attributes about my customers or maybe even attributes about that asset or the device that the ticket or the alert was generated against. Attributes about the ticket itself, right? The priority, the issue type, the status, and even your own custom fields that you can create. So you can create your own custom fields, use those for conditioning your workflow rules, automatically updating through workflow rules, you know, search filters, reporting filters, as if it was a system generated field that came out of box. Let's do an easy one. Hey, when somebody makes an edit or records time or adds a note, and you know, let's say they update the status, easy operators to choose from here, right? They change the status to your own configurable values. Well, then what do we want to happen? Now we do have time sensitive handling. So this allows us to say, hey, I only want this to happen within this time frame, right? Based on the timestamp of the event. So maybe I own, if it comes in after hours, put it into an after hours queue, notify my after hours technician and assign an after hours labor rate, right? To the ticket, as an example. We can make automated updates. So as I mentioned, maybe we're routing these tickets into queues as they come in, right? Or we're escalating them to a different queue or we're assigning the tickets to a resource or we're updating a status or your own custom fields. We can do other actions like sending surveys out to measure customer satisfaction, right? Maybe executing API callouts or putting additional checklist items on a ticket or moving that ticket or task to the work list for the technician based on when it's coming due or if a critical issue comes in, right? Or if it's been idle for too long, put that ticket on somebody's work list so they know to start working on it immediately. 
We can put to-dos on your calendars for follow-up actions. We have a bi-directional calendar sync with Exchange. And then, of course, we can automate your notifications. So when these events and conditions occur, who do we want to notify? We can email and text message any licensed Autotask resource. We're emailing your external clients or customers. We've got built-in recipients, whoever's assigned to the ticket or whoever created the ticket, right, or everybody monitoring the queue or the whole account team. You can also create your own virtual work groups. Again, maybe I have an after hours work group, right, for my after hours handling. And all of our notifications are template based. These notifications do come out of box pre-configured for you. They can be in plain text or HTML. And again, all of, uh, even the templates can be edited this is an ugly one, it's not in HTML, um, but it could be in HTML and everything inside those brackets are simply variables that you can choose to insert into your notification uh, so you can ensure that you are communicating the right detailed information back and forth, All right? Take a bigger one here, I'm using a different browser, but this is just showing nice pretty HTML with borders and colors, right? So again, um, fully editable, we'll provide over 200 notification templates for you out of box, you can edit the templates, the defaults, create your own, and workflow rules can automatically trigger or generate those notifications to the appropriate people, you know, based on your selected events and conditions. I know that was a ton of information to share with you, and we're really only just touching the tip of the iceberg as far as, you know, we didn't really get into project management or procurement in too much, right, or sales or quoting, um, but of course, I do want to uh, stop at this point, give you some information to kind of digest and absorb and determine if, you know, if, it, if it's a solution that you'd like to take a deeper look at. You can certainly contact Datto, uh, your account manager, schedule some one-on-one -on -one demonstrations, and we can take you through workflows on some of the other areas that maybe we didn't get through today. But thank you for your time and attention today. I do hope you found this webinar or demonstration to be helpful. And uh, we look forward to your business and talking to you again in the future. Thank you so much.